Hi, and welcome to Mondays with Marlo. I am so excited. You can tell how excited I am that we've got the great Tim Gunn. And I'm thrilled to be here with you, Marlo. Oh, we're thrilled. Uh -oh. This is the second time Tim has been on. And in the meantime, he has written this fabulous book, uh -oh. which is already on the New York Times bestseller list. But I read it over the weekend, and I love it. Thank you I just, so much. Not just that I'm in it, which of course yeah, added you a are little, big time. It added a little bit to it, but no, it's fabulous. And he shows you like what what shape the pants should be, what shape the underwear should be. I mean, I, I really loved it, and the history of fashion too. Which it's was, fascinating. Yeah, very fascinating. And I actually wanted to tell the history of fashion from the point of departure of what's in your closet, right? Because I wanted to make it very relatable. Right. Well, it did. I mean, I and I'm sure glad we don't have those crinolines anymore. My oh, God, my they were hilarious. I know. Poor women. And heavy. No wonder they never had any affairs. <laughs> you couldn't get that stuff off fast enough. Anyway, congratulations Thank on your you book. Thank you so much. And we, we have so many questions for you, oh, so I want to get right to it. I'd love to. Everybody is so excited. We're getting questions for days. I'm thrilled. So here we go. Francis. Francis wants to know, what is the worst fashion oh. trend of all time? And what do you think is the best fashion trend of all? Well, you should know what you've written this book on history. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, Francis, when it comes to the worst trends, Oh, I have several. Do you mind if I have more oh, than one? Oh, no, okay. yes. Let's start with one that's going to be very polarizing for people who are watching, and that is the capri pant. And I say that because for many women, it's simply not a flattering shape. It cuts you off at the widest part of your calf, not flattering, and our clothes provide us with a kind of optical illusion, and frankly, it makes most women look shorter. Mm -hmm. And most of the women I know want to look as long and lean as possible. Right. And what's worse than the cargo capri, than the capri pant is the cargo capri oh, with the pockets. That. Oh, I hate that. Then you look shorter and wider. Oh, no, I know. And you look like a plumber. Exactly. I know, I hate that. And you know, it, it is a utilitarian pant. Well, the cargo is a utilitarian right. aspect of a pant right. or a short. And that's where it belongs in, mm. in a utilitarian right. context. So another one of the worst trends, the dropped crotch Pants. Oh, those are horrible. They're awful. Awful, awful. I mean, it awful. looks like you're packing a Depends. <laughs> Who wants to look like that? It's mostly a kid thing, though, isn't it? Teenagers? Well, I wish. Yeah, if, yeah. If, if, I mean, if, if most of these dubious trends were to stay in the teens, right. I'd be fine with it. Right, I think right, the people right. are experimenting, right. they're growing into their own fashion-wise, right, right. do this and don't do it later. Right. <laughs> and then the third is a contemporary boo-boo, yeah. in my view. Yeah. And every time I talk about this item, the stock goes up and they open a new store. <laughs> What's that? Crocs. Oh, God, they're horrible. They're horrible. I know. I they know. really are horrible. No, they're, all, they're also dangerous. Kids can fall right out of well, them. Well, I saw a child get stuck in an escalator because oh, really? of a croc. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Oh, oh, they'll my. probably sue me now. No, no, but that's no. Right. But it's factual. That <laughs> yeah, happened. Yeah. But it wasn't the actual shoe itself. It was the charms that you buy oh, that's right. that's to put right. on the shoe. That's and it was right. one of the charms that got right, stuck. Right, so, what, is, what is the appeal of that shoe? Comfort. Yeah. And I always say, if you only dress for comfort, stay in bed. That's right. <laughs> really, stay in bed. You're rough. You're rough. Now, what, what's the, <laughs> the best, best fashion trend? Well, think of all the classic items. Yes. I mean, think about the classic trench, something right. that's never going to go out of style, right, right. will always look good. I mean, the best items are those that have staying power, right, in my view. Right. Like the crew neck cashmere sweater. Perfect. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. The great. basic black dress. Mm -hmm. um, the the shift or the sheath. I right. mean, they're they're not going out of style. Yeah. A classic blazer. How, how much better yeah. do, do things get? So there you are. The yeah. best and the worst. And items knows. with staying power are the best. This is from Andrea. I know in your new book. Oh, Andrea read your book. Thank I you, know Andrea. in your new book you focus on the past, present, and future of fashion. So I was wondering if there was one decade you could oh. relive solely for the style. What would it be? Oh, I, I, easily the 1960s. Really? But I'll tell you why, Marlo. And I have to say, your presence in the book. Can I show everyone? Yes, yes. Your presence in the book is the peak, the very, <laughs> very peak of what's best. Uh, about uh, the 60s. About the 60s. It was a wonderful time. Whoops. Look, everyone. I have my own page. Yes. Isn't that amazing? I'm there she is. Posing with a turkey. Marlo That's Thomas. That. <laughs> I could have airbrushed the turkey you know, out. I didn't even notice it at first because I'm so <laughs> captivated by you. Um, but what's so wonderful about the 60s is I don't believe we can ever have another decade like it. When you think about it, we usher it in with 
Mad Men with right. the Kennedy era, right. with this classicism. Right. We then have this wonderful mod, mod, mod oh, epicenter. Twiggy and all Fanta- that coming. The miniskirt is right, invented. Right. We have the clear vinyl dress, thanks right. to Yves Saint Laurent, that's the paper a, dress. Right, that's but right. then we usher it out with hippiedom right. and people getting rid of all the um, infrastructure and undergarments right. and women resisting all of that. I, in fact, I think that it was that end of the 60s that created the comfort trap and suddenly I people so, thought yeah. oh well, i don't have to be constrained right, I, right, I right. need to pull myself yeah. together i remember the courage clothes were very structured oh the courage clothes were them. fantastic rudy gunreich oh, just i love mean them. incredible they were fabulous okay so the 60s. the 60s thank you andrea so this is from francis what are the three most important items for every woman to have in her closet now i know you're asked this every time i see you well it's really important i actually have Ten essential items, but let me choose three of them. You can choose five. Okay. Let's well I'll go back to the classic items. The trench coat. Right. And I say that because you can wear it to the grocery store, you can wear it to the opera. Right. A classic blazer. Mm-hmm. When you think about the ubiquity today of jeans and a t shirt, what better way to dress them up and what easier way than putting on a blazer? A blazer. How f- fantastic. There you go. And with a nod to d- jeans and denim, a good pair of dark wash jeans. Dark for sure. And the the style that's best for most women is one that falls straight from the widest part of your hip, no flare, no taper. Right, you showed a picture of that in your book. Yes. I like that, yeah. Um and a classic black dress. Every woman needs right. one. Definitely. And I've run into so many women who don't own one. Right. Really? I don't own one. Absolutely and then, not. And a crisp white shirt. That's on my list. Oh, good. <laughs> Perfect. See, we're a team. We're a fashion. I actually just broke out in a kind of tingling sensation thinking I'm a fashion team with Marlo Thomas. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, this is from Ashley. Oh, what are the three biggest faux pas you see women make when it comes to oh. dressing well? And what about men? That's it, important because, you know, we try to get our men to look great. Not true. every man dresses the way you do. Oh, well, you're kind. But, you know, it's, I, I maintain, Marlo, it's not about the actual clothes that I wear. It's about the fit. Mm-hmm. And the faux pas that I see committed aren't about individual items of clothing. It's about a disregard or a lack. I shouldn't say a disregard. It implies people are thumbing their nose at it. It's a, it's a lack of consciousness about yes, three elements that I hold all important in fashion. Mm-hmm. Silhouette, mm-hmm. proportion, and fit. Mm-hmm. When they're in harmony and balance, you right. look great in anything. Right. When you came in the room, we were talking about the proportions yes, right. in, in your own head-to-toe look right. and how fabulous they are and how they work. Well, I'm always careful that my top isn't too long. Because if it's too long, it makes me look shorter. But exactly. If it's, if it's the right length, then my legs, which are long anyway, look very long. And when you think about that, it doesn't matter what price range you're talking right. about in terms of exactly. items of clothing. It's, right. it's it's all about having an eye for proportion relative to your own shape. Right. Right. So it's different for all of us, I have to right. say, Ashley. But then the biggest faux pas is not being conscious of how your clothes hang on Well, you. that's true. Right. That's what and, you're saying. And there's another aspect. People who say, and I hear this from men and women, I'm not a fashion person. I don't care how I dress. And if people judge me oh, I based know. on that, then they're shallow and yeah. inconsequential. Well, that's just, they're and just I too say, lazy. Poo, poo. <laughs> they're just lazy. But also, so I say, accept responsibility for how you're dressing. Yeah, right. Because I'm always talking about, I'm babbling again, but semiotics, the clothes we wear, send a message about how the world perceives us. So accept responsibility for that. Well, you know, there are some people, like my husband, who is gorgeous and I adore oh, him. Oh, indeed he is. But he is not very fashion conscious. So he. You know, being married to me, he's become a little more aware. But when I first met him, he would say, well, why doesn't this go together? Well, why can't I wear that? Well, You've been educating you know, him. Yeah, well, I don't know about educating him, but it wasn't that he was lazy or that he was... He didn't know. He just didn't know. Yeah. And, and, he, and it wasn't anything he ever focused on. So uh, there's some of that, too. I mean, there I think, is. I think from shows like yours and books like yours, people get a little more information. And then so. they can say, oh, wow. Oh, I see. Oh, so wear a blazer with my jeans. I, I think the conversation with you is really important. Well, thank you. Because some people really just don't know. They don't know. The only reason I know is because my mother was a maniac about clothes. Oh, you know? I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, she took us shopping every you know season, and this goes with this, and this goes with so that. So it's part of your DNA. Yeah, exactly. Ah. Oh, yeah, so sure. Okay, this is from Bria. What were you like in Ooh. high school, and what did you wear to your prom? I didn't go to my prom. Why? I was the shyest, most introverted kid you would ever have really? wanted to meet. Yeah, you Ter- are now. Well, teaching brought it brought oh. a whole different side to me. Oh. I mean, I realized oh. I had to get out of that shell. So. Um, but I was a nerd. I was a geek. 
Uh, and a proud nerd and geek upon reflection so, at the time. So was Steven Spielberg and Bill Gates. And seems, they didn't do so seems badly. Seems all successful <laughs> men were geeks. Well, that's good to know. If you want to get any more in life, become a geek. <laughs> okay, this is James. Wants to know, what would you say is the biggest difference between your post-50 life and your life before 50? Oh, well, it's what I say James every day. James must be turning 50. James, if you are turning 50, congratulations. I, I mean... I'm sure you feel the same way, Marlo. I wouldn't go backwards a single day. No, Every no, day, right. we are more knowledgeable. I feel better prepared to navigate the world. Mm -hmm. I feel um, richer spiritually. Mm -hmm. um, I've learned something more. Yeah. I wouldn't go back for anything. You're more aware. Much more aware. So you. So the difference is, is that you're more aware and more probably comfortable in your own body now. And, and James may know this about me too. I had a very wonderful career that I was very proud of as an educator, and in a way was at the top of the heap. I mean, it was the chair of the fashion design program at Parsons, the first fashion design school in this nation. You don't get any better. You know, than it that. doesn't get any better than that. And then, after I turned fifty, the Project Runway producers contacted me, and my whole life changed. Amazing. So. It really is phenomenal. So That's you never great. know what's around the corner. You never do. You never just know. Just keep working and just let, do your best work and people notice. This is from Lara. Besides wearing black, do you have any tips on how to dress to look slimmer? Oh, Lara, I'm so glad you asked this question because I, I want to say this about black. It's only slimming if it fits you. If it's volumetric, I mean, I'm always, I always say the more volume your clothes have, the more volume you appear to have. Right, right. So it's only slimming if it fits you. It is absolutely true that the darker colors have a more slimming effect, and it's why I advise women, most women, considering the size and shape of of many women in America, I'll say most men, women in America, you're better off if you're wearing separates to have a darker color on the bottom and a lighter color on the top. Um, it's because of the optical illusion effect. Right, exactly. And I will also say when you're wearing separates, think about, um, what's, God, I'm, I'm losing proportion. my vocabulary now. Well, proportion's important, but think also about counterpoint. So if you have a sleek fitting bottom, you're going to want to have a little more volume on top right. and vice versa. Right, that's right. And also stay away from patterns. Oh, yes, I yes. Mean, Thank really. you, Marlo. Yeah, I mean, that, yeah. I mean e even I, and I'm pretty thin, you I put on a, very I, thin. I put on a flower dress and I honestly, I, I just look like a whale. I, like, <laughs> I, I look awful. Well, you don't want to look like a couch, so that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is from Martin. Hi, Tim. You've had so much success in the last few years. What would you say to someone in their late 40s who feels like they still haven't quite found their stride. Can you really invent yourself that late in life? Oh, well, I, Martin, I, I mean, in a manner of speaking, I reinvented myself after right. turning 50, as we just talked about. Right. Um, it's so important that whatever you're doing, you, you be passionate about. And if there's something that you haven't done yet, if there's something that that you've been longing to do, I mean, I say throw the dice, take a risk. Do it, do you it now. You just don't know. Yeah. I mean, if I had a crystal ball um, about Project Runway, maybe I would know what was going to happen, but I didn't, I didn't right. have a clue. Right. I mean, to begin. Were you scared at first when it well, was offered to you? Did I you, was a you? consultant, I wasn't going to be on camera. Oh, wow. So my role in the show was in no one's vocabulary. Oh my. So, I was, the only thing I was worried about was what's the quality of the show going to be like? Right. Because who knew? Especially with your reputation, you yes. could look foolish. Yeah. Um, and so, so, but I threw the dice. And I think that's really what it's about. If we know what the outcome's going to be, why bother even doing it? Right, exactly. You know, you're, then you're already there. Right, so right. take a risk, take a chance, and, and bull chance. I read something wonderful the other day. I love quotes of the day, and I get them uh, from well, my brother sends them to me on the website. And one of them the other day was, if you want to predict the future, invent it. Oh, how wonderful. And I it, love that. Oh, I loved it. I, I love just, that. I thought that was so encouraging because everything feels so random. So start to invent it. If you want to do something, if you wish somebody would give you something or give you a break at something, go find it. And another one I read, I'm not sure who said it, was um, opportunity doesn't knock. It presents itself when you're banging down the door. Oh, I love that too. Isn't that great? I love I, those. I, do. I love those kinds of things. Yeah, you know, I would say to my students who would say sometimes with too much frequency that they're. I, I would ask, why aren't you doing something? Well, I'm waiting to be inspired. You can't wait oh, no. for the muse to enter the room and strike That's you. That's right. You have to go That's get right. the muse. That's right. Yeah, just what you're saying. Right. Uh, this is Brenda. I usually go by the rule that my shoes and bag should match in color. 
If I wear a belt, I try to match that color as well. This can get difficult and has prevented me from buying certain items in unusual colors. Does this rule still hold true or is it too old fashioned? Brenda, it's old fashioned. Definitely. You don't have to subscribe to that at all. Um, no, no reason for any of those three items to match. Belt, shoes, handbag. I will say, speaking for men, I think the belt and the shoes Look should good. match. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. I do. But for women, anything goes. Absolutely. No, I mean, what's greater looking with a black dress than a red shoe? I'm, exactly. Or a red bag, whatever, yeah. yellow, purple. I love it. I never wear black with black. No. It's too boring. So change it up. Yeah, absolutely. And this is from Hannah. What is the one thing you know now that you wish you knew when you were just starting out? Oh. Gosh, probably so many things. Yeah, Hannah, that's a tough one. Um, you know, I, 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 just be true to who you are. I know it sounds so banal in a way, but it's so true. Don't be who you think people want you to be. Mm -hmm. Don't be um, dishonest about who you are and, and what you're about and what your values are. Mm -hmm. It's just so important to own them and then own responsibility for owning them. Right. And there's another, there's Oscar Wilde. I had all these quotes the other day I was looking at. Oscar Wilde said this great thing that said, uh, just be yourself, everyone else is taken. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that great? I love these saying. Actually, that's priceless. That I have great? not heard that quote yeah, before. Yeah. <laughs> everyone else is taken. <laughs> this is from Laura. A lot of my friends have a black leather jacket. Do you think that's a good staple for a woman's wardrobe? Oh, I love a black leather yeah, jacket. I do too. But, and, but I want to say this about a black leather jacket. I'll... I would imagine most of you have a certain image in mind, and I'll bet that all those images are different. <laughs> I mean, there's so many different styles. There, there's a, a, a blazer style. Right. There's the motor, the riff on the motorcycle jacket, right. or it could be a classic motorcycle right. jacket. Or those a real dressy one. They yeah. have little ruffles. Oh, they're, yeah. they're, they're, so if you don't have a black leather, leather jacket and it's speaking to you, it's crying out to you, just get one that fits in with your lifestyle and with your taste and proclivities. As it goes over everything. Yeah. Dresses, jeans. This is from Ken. I heard that you suggest that men wear shapewear in certain I situations. <laughs> I know, I read that in your book. I'm a pretty masculine guy, but I'd be open to trying anything that'll make my clothes look better and conceal some of my belly fat. So what kinds of shapewear are available to men and where do I get it? Ken, it's a great question. And the whole thing about shapewear for men and for women, people don't know. You just look better. Right. And your clothes do fit you better. I tend to wear it on the red carpet when I'm wearing a tux. Because you of I, all people. Well, I just want to, I feel more secure. <laughs> I mean, it's all about here. Yes, it is. Um, so much of it. Um, if you if you just Google men's shapewear, you will see an infinite number of resources. There are lots of them. And I buy mine online, so people really don't know. So when it says what kinds of shapewear, so what is it basically for your tummy? Well, they're, they're uh, t-shirts. Some, okay. of them, some of them have arms, some of them, or, you know, short sleeves, right. some of them don't. Some of them come down mid-thigh. Right. Some of them just come down to about the, the, the hip bone. Mm -hmm. um, but can I have to tell you this? It's extremely <laughs> difficult to get on. And when I'm removing it, I often think I should go to my nearest emergency room <laughs> because I'm quite convinced I'm going to dislocate both shoulders. I know, I read that in your book. <laughs> That's so funny. Michael wants to know, how does one find a good tailor? Oh, that's a good question, Michael. I mean, referral is the best way. Yeah. Someone you know who knows a good tailor. Otherwise, it's 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 you have to try and see how that person does. I mean, I've actually had success at my dry cleaner. Really? Yeah. Really? I mean, I have. Though I'm I'm pretty specific in giving instructions about what I want done too. And also, when you buy a suit, don't oh, they, they, they tailor it? Then. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yes. Uh, this is from Patty. What should be the look for a fifty-something woman who's five five zero oh, and one hundred and ten pounds? Well, Patty, I mean, whatever look you subscribe to. Um, you're petite, so you need to, Marla and I were talking about this a moment ago, need to be careful about prints right. um, and the scale because it's all relative to, to your own scale. Right. Um, for women, I would say 35 and over, you need to be very conscious about how much skin you're showing. You don't want to be a grandma Jezebel. Um, but if you're short like that, five feet, probably light on the bottom to make your legs look longer. Yes, that's a very good of, advice. Yeah, that would be good. Very good advice. Mm -hmm. um, so to be, but silhouette proportion and fit work for everyone no matter right. what size and right. shape they are. And when 
I see a photograph of a petite woman that where there's not another reference for scale. It's all about how good she looks. Right. It's not about right. oh she's petite. Look yeah. what she's done. Yeah. So and at five feet and one hundred and ten, you clearly have a good figure. Yeah, yeah. So, so crispness is probably crispness good is good. Yeah. This is from Jenny. I love Tim Gunn. Well, isn't that nice? Oh, that's, thank you, Jenny. <laughs> Here's a question. What's the new biggest fashion trend for fall? Oh, actually, I'm glad to have this opportunity because Good. this frust may frustrate you as much as it frustrates other people. I am not someone who says you need to go out and buy something. Um, for me, it's, I always take a Socratic approach to this. What's in your closet? Right. What do you need? What's your lifestyle like? Because quite frankly, I'm very cynical about trends. When you line up all the fashion magazines for September and you look at what their fall trends are, it makes a full circle. It's everything. Right, I mean, right, it's right. one of the things I love about fashion today. Whatever you want, it's out there. Right. And you can find it. So it's about understanding who you are and how you want to present yourself to the world. But don't go chasing a trend. But when it comes to the five items that Marlo and I were talking about earlier, if you don't have one of those items, find that. That's your trend. Yeah. This is from Dee Dee. Hi, Tim. What are some good warm to cool seasonal transition pieces to invest in? Oh, well, Dee Dee, today it's all about layering. Um, and layering can take us from warm to cool and cool to warm. Um, we were talking earlier about cashmere. Right. And I, what I love about cashmere today, or else I wouldn't mention it, is that yeah. it's very, very affordable. Um, you can buy it at, at, at really um, any price level, and it doesn't pill. So it's it's the kind of item that is um, has staying power in your wardrobe. It's affordable. Pill and means those little balls. Those little balls, oh, know, which are that. unattractive. <laughs> and I always recommend a cardigan because it's so easy I to I take like on it. and I off. I like a cardigan. Um, and color. Up to you, up to you in your wardrobe. But if you stick with neutrals, you're pretty safe. Okay, this is Helen, and uh, Helen's got Helen's uh, need some help. So Helen, we've got Tim Gunn here. Okay, Helen. Okay, I'm besides with you. a tent, what does a seventy year seventy year old, two hundred and forty pound, five foot two woman wear? The stores only put out blacks and browns, no pretty colors, and the shoes those stupid heels. If I wore them, I'd put holes in the floor every time I took a step. <laughs> so it's not a pretty picture. So what what does she do? Now that's that's a lot of weight that you're carrying. Well, Helen, one thing is. You, and in fact, I'm responding to your comment about the tent. That's the last thing you want to consider because you don't want clothes that have vol more volume than you have. You actually want clothes that skim your body, that don't pull away from your body. And you may not believe this, but trust me, a belt, and I'm not talking about a cinch belt, I'm talking about a belt just to give you some proportion, um, can be very, very flattering. And I, I would advise pants, and a longer tunic right. kind of top right, that right. has some volume and then just have a slouchy belt around it right. to give you some proportion. And when I'm talking about proportion, for all of you, regardless of, of size and, and, and shape, think of yourself as a series of thirds from your shoulders to your toes and dress accordingly. So one third on top, two thirds on bottom, or two thirds on top, one third on bottom, uh -huh, uh -huh. and the tunic is a kind of midway point between the one third and the two thirds right, on top, right. which is why the belt can be very important. Mm -hmm. It helps to helps give you that third right. dimension. And but, you can get some color with a scarf or something. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. don't worry about heels. I know fashion editors who never wear heels. Um, there are so many beautiful, fashionable flats oh, out right. there. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, Audrey Hepburn never them. wore heels. No. Audrey Hepburn always wore flats. So Helen, try it. But separates, pants, tunic tops, and a belt. Hope that helps, Helen. By the way, speaking of Helen and Cleopatra. Oh, yes, yes. Are you a Helen or a Cleopatra? I'm a Cleopatra. You are. I like everything fitted. Yeah, you are in, in a Tim's tailored book, girl. In Tim's book, a Helen of Troy or a Cleopatra, these historical women, obviously. Helen likes, you know, the Grecian drape gowns. Uh, I love them. I think they're beautiful. But Cleopatra likes everything shaped. And yes. I love shaped things. So I thought, oh, isn't that interesting? I'm a Cleopatra. You know what else is interesting? Because I was it's anticipating being with you today and thinking about the Helens and the Cleopatras and, of course, acknowledging that you are a Cleopatra. <laughs> There's something else about this from a historical perspective. Egypt predates Rome. Uh, and I'm sorry, Greece and Rome. Um, predates it and also it was a matrilinear society where we have women ruling. Mm -hmm. We don't have that in Greece. No. We don't have that's that in right. Rome. That's it's really right. true. Right. And it, I thought about you because of the fact that you are a pioneer. You're such a leader Thank you. Thank and you. such an icon. Thank so it makes you. sense that you would be a Cleopatra. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>
I love Marlo Thomas, can you tell? <laughs> so cute, so cute. Okay, this is from Steve. Tim is a hero of oh, mine. Oh, thank you, Steve. He says, I've learned to be a better teacher oh, by watching how you. he interacts with students. Who are his teaching heroes? Oh, well, the wonderful teachers I had, and not all of them were wonderful. And it was right. really the, the teachers I had when I was in art school. Mm -hmm. um, I had been through uh, liberal arts education where, upon reflection, I always felt as though the you were always trying to find the answer in the back of the book. Mm -hmm. And when I had an art and design education, there is no answer in the back That's of the book. So it's great. inside you. That's so great. So it's about pulling that out. That, that's great. Um, but I had, I mean, two people in particular, uh, an incredible woman by the name of Rona Slade and an incredible gentleman by the name of William Christenberry. They were uh, huge mentors And for was me. that here in New York? That was in Washington, D.C. Wow, that's great. I hope they're hearing this. They're alive and well, I'm happy Good. to say. Okay, this is from Kathy. What do you wear if you have double D boobs oh. and a flat butt? Marlo, I'm going to defer to you on this one. I have one. no idea. <laughs> Kathy, we're stumped. I don't know. Well, I think for the double D boobs, you need the best bra you can possibly find because I do know that. In New York, we have a place called Bra Tenders. Oh, they're fantastic. Yeah, and they really help you get a good fit. So a good fitting bra is really important so that you don't just look like a blob. But you know what I also saw, and not but, you know what, what I also saw had presented to me within the last six months? For women, it's a... Um, under. Undergarment, underpants, right. with a with a, a with a little padding in the rear oh, end. Oh, really? Well, yeah. there's a thing. There's yeah. a thing right yeah, there. Yeah, you can you can pad it. Yeah. Um, it's marketed. That's right. Okay, this is from Carolyn. What if you absolutely cannot wear heels of any kind because of back, knee, or feet issues, but want a little lift since it's flattering? So, what is that? A wedgie? Uh, yeah, well, you know, a wedge. I'm so glad you said that. Carolyn, listen to Marlo. <laughs> a wedge gives you so much support, right. and they come in different heights, but you're not going to wobble or topple. Right. I've met so many women who have this uh, disdain for any sort of heel, and it's right. partic particular stiletto. They love a wedge. Yeah, because it does. it's good for your back yeah. and your posture to it's have a little lift. Speaking of it, sit up. We're running out of time, so I have, oh. to, I have to move oh. fast. Okay. This is from Judith. Has Tim ever considered putting out a line of clothes for plus-sized women? You know, I'm going to say something to you yes. and to Judith that I haven't said to anyone. What? I actually had, have been trying for a year and a half. Really? Almost two years. And here's the stumper. I can't deliver the product at a price that is attractive to the retailers. And trust me, everything's under $100. It's too wow. much for them. Really? But I'm not giving up, Judith. Okay. I'm not giving up. Okay, now this is Kathy. Oh, I love Tim. Oh. I'm a plus size woman with a large chest and have the hardest time with shirts and pants that flatter me. Why should I look, what should I look for to flatter my figure? Well, I think you kind of mentioned it. Yeah. Longer, L longer, the longer tops. Right. So have a little more volume on top, but not too much volume. and and slimmer fitting pants, but the people aren't going to be, aren't going to see you from the middle of your thigh up. So don't worry about, oh, how does it look or how does it feel in that area? Um, it's, our clothes give us, or provide us the opportunity for an optical illusion. Right. Use the opportunity. And this is from Phyllis. At what age did you realize that you had a fashion sense? Oh, oh, Phyllis. I mean, after I turned 50, well, after I took over the Department of Fashion Design, I was 46, 47. That wasn't the first you realized you had a fashion sense. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. What about when you were a kid? No. I grew up in Washington, D.C. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you were, how old were you when you were teaching fashion? Weren't you teaching? Art? Well, I was teaching design, but uh -huh. I didn't start teaching fashion oh. until I actually was the chair of the department. Oh, really? And then I started teaching. Uh, and so you, d you didn't dress like this? I didn't. I mean, I was still wearing suits, but they didn't fit me as well as these oh, do, oh. and I wasn't as brave So how did you, color. how did you get fashion-y? Well, Diane von Furstenberg helped me, for one. She's a, a great mentor. And What did she say to you? She didn't say anything. She sneered. Oh, <laughs> as only Diane uh, can. That's funny. That's very. <laughs> and funny. I realized I need to look into myself and tap into my own resources and look at the world and look at the people I love. I would love to emulate. And for me, it's Cary Grant and right. George Clooney. There you are. Yeah. There you are. So this is from Mina. Every time I'm shopping for a dress, I wonder: Is this too short? Uh oh. I'm a woman in my 30s who's in good shape, but I don't want to look vulgar. I also don't want to look homely by wearing long dresses no. all the time. Is there a surefire way to determine what length my dresses should be? Well, first of all, I want to say to Mina: Whenever anyone asks themselves the question, the answer is yes. Right. So, but with skirts, I would say a couple of inches above the knee 
never any lower than the lowest point of your kneecap. It's a surefire way to look dowdy. Uh huh. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, this is an interesting question, and I bet you'd be able to help. This is from a man. We have a lot of men today. I love it. Yeah, Andrew. Hi, Tim. Where can I find good quality suits oh. that are affordable? I'm an average guy in his 30s who doesn't make much money, but I'm looking for stylish suits, but I've been unsatisfied with a lot of the choices at the big department stores. Do you mind if I talk about no, a brand? No, go ahead. Uh, Andrew, I'm wearing this fabulous brand called Suit Supply. I told Marlo, this yeah. suit is $500. I, I thought you can it was go thousands. to suitsupply.com. Um, they, they, they're here in New York and Soho. They're also open in Chicago and Washington. I'm not a paid spokesperson. I'm just an unbridled, unconditional fan because the suits are great. The sales associates know everything in the world about fit. And well, Phil suit, should try that it. That suit fits you Thank so you. great. So great. Well, well, it, Phil, Phil's a hard one to get to go shopping. <laughs> but anyway, this is from Eileen. Is it acceptable for women over 50 to wear leggings? If so, how should I wear them? Well, it's acceptable to wear leggings, providing you're, that you're not pretending they're a pair of pants, which right. has become the latest. Have right. you, are you not shocked on the streets no. of New York? <laughs> I kind of wear leggings. I like well, them. Well, but you're not wearing them as pants. Well, I wear them with flats and a long sweater. That's what I mean. You're yeah, wearing yeah. them with a long sweater. Well, yes, You're I not am. wearing them with a crop top. No, no, no. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. No, leggings are perfectly acceptable. You just have to watch where they end. Right. You don't want it to look like a stocking that you cut the foot off of, and you don't want it to look like a long bicycle short. Okay, we're running out of time. We're sorry. so out of time. I'm sorry. But I'm going to go just a it's couple me. more. This is Doreen. Hi, Tim. I'm such a big fan of yours. I'm a short woman, and I was hoping you could tell me, how can I wear boots without looking stumpy? That, that's an interesting question. I don't know the answer to that. Um, oh, Doreen, I wish you were here with us. I'd like to know how short you are. Yes, and how wide you are. Yeah, that's a big exactly. Thing. Because, I mean, I, I sing the praises of knee-high boots. Right. However, when one's calf is wider, that right. can be difficult to achieve. Right. Um, it's all about what you're wearing them with, frankly. I guess, right. Uh, and if you're wearing them with a skirt, um, the higher, the better, so that you don't, so that you're, you're what it was you said earlier, you're right. one length below that right. hem, as opposed to having several things happening. Right. Um, they're safest with a pair of pants. Right, yeah. They really are. And then you can wear any height that you right, like. Exactly. All right, Excellent. that's it. We're so completely out of time. Thank you, We have this fabulous man and his fabulous book, which is already on the bestseller list. Really, really, you're going to love it. Not only going to give you great tips on, on how to dress, but a whole history of, of fashion. I just loved it. Congratulations. Marlo, thank you. You're mm -hmm. welcome. I'll welcome. be with you. I'll talk to, to you, with you and to everyone about anything, anytime. Air kisses. <laughs> <laughs> Bye-bye. I'll see you next time.